JC 2 4 7
So I think that's what Christ was trying to establish. Okay. Not to allow human beings to descend to the place where our society is in chaos. Mm -hmm. Each person taking avenge on the other because I did you a wrong, I should do you back. And mm -hmm. so that our society will be in serious trouble. But let me but, quote but to you. Oh, sorry, go ahead. To me, I think that killing is wrong. It doesn't matter who does it. So I cannot see how the state can say, okay, I'm going to kill some persons to show that killing is wrong. Mm -hmm. To me, it sends a, a mixed message. Uh, the, the big thing is whether killing is right or wrong. Let me interject here by okay. just giving the background. Mm -hmm. uh, it's found in Leviticus chapter 25, the latter part of it, where it says in verse 17, um, maybe verse 16, and he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death. Verse 19, and if a man cause a blemish in his neighbor, as he hath done, so shall it be done to him. And verse 21, he that killeth a beast, and I think Pastor Samuel saying alluded to that, he shall restore it. And he that killeth a man, he shall be put to death. So Christ has now come and said, what I've read in Exodus, I've understood it as something that you have followed all your life. Now I'm saying to you, love your enemies. Let's try to reconcile that. Let, let's take a look. Let's see the reason why God has given capital punishment. Genesis 9, verse 6. Whosoever sheddeth man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God mm -hmm. he was made. Man is not an animal. He was put in charge of the planet. He was made in the image and likeness of God in charge to ensure that where he, he has been under control, that things are run in a particular way. God mm -hmm. says, when you get out of hand, therefore, mm -hmm. to take another man's life mm -hmm. is destroying the image of God, is re reflecting in what God says should not happen. And therefore, for that basis and that principle, God says, then capital punishment is necessary. I have given you the right when somebody murders another person, then you should protect and preserve the society for destroying the image of God. So that capital punishment is not something that man brought into being. It is what God said to, to happen. Mm -hmm. And you're doing it because you have destroyed another man's life. You have murdered another person. Mm -hmm. So we are not to murder each other. We are not to be killing each other. But when you do that, you violate God's law. Mr. Rose, you wanted to respond. Yes, um, because I'm looking at Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse mm -hmm. 21, that says, And then I shall not pity... But life shall go for life, uh -huh. eye for eye, tooth, tooth for tooth, tooth uh -huh. hand for hand, foot for foot. Right. That is in Deuteronomy, that's in the Old Testament. Right. But in the New Testament, Jesus came and he said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 38, uh -huh. Ye have heard, because he's making reference to that very text I just quoted in Deuteronomy. Right. Ye have heard that it had been said, it had been said, uh -huh. not even... Um, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a and tooth. a tooth for a tooth, of course, you didn't go the whole thing about the life for life, that's the same thing there. All right. But I say unto you, mm -hmm. but I say unto you, and just if, if I'm to say that I should not pay heed to that, then I may as well say that I should not pay heed to the fact where Jesus said also that you, sh you have been heard, it is okay to put aside your wife, but mm -hmm. now I'm saying to you, mm -hmm. you should not put her aside except for right. divorce. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to accept that and do what he said in the New Testament, when, when it refers to adultery, for example, mm -hmm. then I must also pay heed to what he says here in Matthew when it refers to capital punishment. Oh, so you are therefore saying that it's, it's a new paradigm. Of God, course, yes. Christ did not want us to continue with capital punishment. Is that yes, your position? Yes, I, I don't believe that Christ wants us to continue with capital punishment. Let's hear the lawyer. <laughs> Well, uh, my, my take on this is that um, the, the ethics of Jesus, hmm. um, which many theologians um, refer to as the ethics of love, mm -hmm. does not negate, negate mm -hmm. the fact that there is the need for justice. Right. So Jesus coming into the world does not indicate to human beings that the consequences of wrong can just be eliminated, mm -hmm. right? In, in any civil society, um, there are laws that govern that society. And, and let me say, following up on what Sister Rosanna made mention about the state being um, the, who has a legal personality, because the state has a legal personality, mm -hmm. to take the life of someone 
If you look at the book of Deuteronomy chapter 17, the death penalty was imposed upon people who showed contempt for court. Hmm. It's right there in the scripture. Uh -huh. So that the justice system, even though it is not infallible, because there's a likelihood that mistakes can be made, uh -huh. um, but God has instituted the justice system. Uh -huh. And that persons who are culpable for um, committing any infractions of the law, all right, they must face the justice system. And if proven to be guilty, then must face the consequences of their guilt. Okay. So press, pause. You'll press pause there for a while, because this is leading us into some deep waters here and some murky waters at the same time. And we have to come back to continue the discussion on this question of whether or not the Bible supports capital punishment, or is it just supported in the old and not supported in the new? Well, there are variants of views here right now. What, is, what do you think? Feel free to drop us a line, as you can email us at JC, JC Ministries at hotmail.com. We will be right back. JC 24-7. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. Cause at the end of a storm is a golden sky and a sweet silver song of a lie. On through the wind, walk on through the rain. Though your dreams be tossed and blow, walk on.
breaking news just for you. We're making available a special DVD offer from the breaking news series with Pastor Steve Riley. Your free copy is finally available. God's touchscreen, better than iPad. Just call the numbers 323-4638 or 326-5586. Or you can email your name and address to jcministries at hotmail.com. That's J-A-Y-C-E-E ministries at hotmail.com. And you can get your copy of God's Touchscreen better than iPad. JC 24-7. We are having a very animated discussion on the question of capital punishment. A Christian perspective. Is it something that the Bible upholds or the Bible outlaws? Sister Rosanna, you wanted to respond to Pastor Samuel Singh's view, and we have variant of views here on this panel. So let me hear your view, Sister Rose. Yes, Pastor Samuel Singh spoke about justice. Mm -hmm. But who is more just than God? And God is about not just justice, but about mercy and forgiveness as well. Okay. So that he is the one who will, at the end of the day, judge every person. And even if we're talking about the justice system, but you know man is involved anyway. Uh -huh. And man on a whole is not, is, just, is not just, and man is not fair. Uh -huh. So many times you may have somebody who might be, um, who may have committed a crime, or maybe, maybe accused of committing a crime. Uh -huh. And many times the, the trial is unfair. Uh -huh. And sometimes people are innocent when they are tried and they are proven guilty. Uh -huh. And they may, they may be um, killed, for example, may be executed, uh -huh. and to discover long after the person was innocent. It happens so many times. Mm -hmm. And this is why justice must be left to God where that is concerned. And besides that, God is about forgiving people and he's a merciful God. Well, to be clear and to be fair at the same time, um, with respect to the, the cases you cited where there was unjust punishment, that may not only apply to the death penalty, it may apply to other kinds of crime as well. So the discussion really is not about whether people were unjustly treated or can be unjustly treated by the sentence that they receive but whether if they are just justified in passing a sentence to a particular individual, whether capital punishment is a way that God would want us to go. We may sentence them to life, and we may say God upholds that. Does God uphold getting rid of their life? That's the question we are asking. Whether they are, well, not whether or not they are innocent, but provided they are guilty, does God still sanction capital punishment? Again, I want us to take... We, we seem to be trying to, to, to separate the God of the Old Testament from the God of the New Testament. Okay. Put it together for us. God sir. is mm -hmm. one God. He, mm -hmm. His character remains the same throughout. Definitely. Our relating to different issues that God had to relate to, there are different methods that were used to inflict or to do that which he intended to do okay. because the situation warrants that he deals with it differently. Right. But his character remains the same right through the, the entire scripture. Mm -hmm. Even let's take the New Testament. I'm looking at Romans 12, Romans 13. He started off in Romans 12 talking about, or ending the Romans chapter 12, talking uh -huh. about how we ought to relate one to the other. Uh -huh. It says, do not avenge. Vengeance is mine, I will repay. Uh -huh. If your enemy, or if it is possible, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. Uh -huh. I will repay, said the Lord. Okay. Then let's go down to chapter 12 now. <laughs> He's now establishing the difference between you dealing one with the other uh -huh. and taking vengeance one and the other. And he now is telling you about what he has put in place uh -huh. to handle our day-to-day -day dealings with life and, and justice and all of that. He, uh -huh. he goes, River, Romans chapter 13. Uh -huh. Let every soul be subject to the governing authority, uh -huh. for there is no authority except from God. Okay. And the authority that exists are approved by God. Mm. Therefore, whosoever resists the authority, resisting the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment to themselves. Good. And it continues, for the rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid? To be, uh, to, do you want to be unafraid? Of the authority, mm. do you want do what is good, and you will have praise from the same the authority that is, 
for he is the he is he God uh -huh. is God's minister. Sorry, for he is God's minister. Right. That's the government. Right. The authority is God's minister. Okay. To the good. Well, I, I think I think what? I have to cut you. Uh -huh. I, th I think I think the point is ma is made that we must respect the judicial good. system. And obviously, we do agree also right. that that there are elements of the judicial system that is. That Iranian. goes country. That's it. Yeah. Because uh -huh. and, uh, sorry to sorry to cut you, but I also want to sort of begin to answer or address the reconciliation problem mm -hmm. of the God of the old with the God of the new. Mm -hmm. Could it be that the God of the Old Testament wanted us to see His reaction to sin, why He allowed the death penalty to occur, and in the New Testament He wants us to see His response to sinners, yes. why He, you know, went further to say love your enemies. Mm -hmm. We may not agree with respect to the capital punishment issue, but mm -hmm. can we not agree that the character of God is maintained throughout the Old and New Testament? In the one case, it's his reaction to sin. Sin is, go is, is deadly right. and has mm -hmm. its consequential That's effects. Mm -hmm. And we must uh, admit that right. God hates sin. Yes. And the ultimate penalty for sin it's is death. death. Mm -hmm. Fine. Therefore, now, we can't stay on this subject for the rest of the day. Therefore, mm -hmm. to, to separate the two, is to right, right. You're cutting God in half. That's right. I'm so just, you've got to bring them together. Pretty beautiful, and that's so why I, I sought to bring it together. Yes. yes. All right. Let me just move on because the time is slipping by. <laughs> Do you think that the death penalty acts as a deterrent mm -hmm. against crime, Pastor Samuel? Well, it is established in two jurisdictions, um, namely Singapore and mm. Malaysia, right. where the death penalty is imposed upon persons who are convicted of being involved in drug trafficking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you look at the stats, mm -hmm. it's very clear right. that the criminal activities are very, very minimal in those states. Mm -hmm. So um, one can say that based upon information, yes, it serves as a deterrent. So you would have no problem with the government of Trinidad and Tobago imposing or at least carrying out the death penalty well that is the law of the state right so all right in the law in the book it is in the law books yeah, right. you understand okay. it is the law of the state right. capital punishment right. is the ultimate penalty for anyone who is convicted of uh, murder so you believe if it is if it is if it's carried out more frequently it could act as a deterrent well even right here in trinidad and tobago if you recall some years ago when a number of persons were yeah. um, executed, right. you understand? Sure. The, the crime rate was very low, mm -hmm. you understand? Yeah, because yeah. Um, citizens realized that the government was serious about, okay. you know, um, protecting the lives of its citizens. And let me say that whenever a crime is committed, a crime of murder is committed, it causes an imbalance in the social order mm -hmm. in, in our country. Okay. And... Um, I believe that, you know, the authorities should take the necessary steps mm. to ensure that um, there is, uh, you know, social order mm. and that, you know, people do not think that they are at liberty okay. to interfere with the existence of other persons in the society. Okay. Well, Sister Rose, assuming that the crime rate and the murder rate in particular won't go down, God forbid, but if it doesn't go down, do you think Christians have a right to utilize whatever defense mechanisms they have at their disposal in order to take matters into their own hands. Do you think Christians, and the key word here is Christians, should they take matters into their own hands? Like buying a gun or uh, learning karate or stuff like that. What do you think? No, I, I do not believe that um, Christians should take matters in their own hand when it comes to defense, for example, buying a gun in the event of. Mm -hmm, right. However, I, I don't see anything wrong with if somebody comes into your home while you are there mm -hmm. to attack you, mm -hmm. and you can at that time do something to prevent the attack, right. I cannot see anything wrong with you doing that. Right. However, I don't want you to premeditate, mm -hmm. you know, being prepared, being ready, like buying a gun or buying a cutlass, having a knife just in the event of. But Sister Rose, somebody might say, challenge you and say, but Sister Rose, you are Christian. You believe that the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. Don't you fear God? Don't you love God? 
Yes, well, I love God and I fear God, but at the same time, if there is something I can do, humanly speaking, to defend myself, right. I will do it. Okay. Because I will still think it is God who is enabling me in the first place. Okay. If God has placed an idea into my head, okay. if God enabled me to be strong enough to that's, be able to deal okay. with it, I would still say it is God who is encircling me. And that's how me, God protects you. He protected gives you wisdom me, of course. to know exactly yeah, what to do and when. to protect yes. you. Um, Pastor, people have accused, Pastor Morris, that is, people have accused Christians of doing precious little to curb the crime rate, and in particular, again, the murder rate. Do you agree? It is so far from the truth. In fact, the Christians have always been the one in the forefront, mm -hmm. crying out against the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. That's what we preach. That's the gospel. That's, that's what the church is about. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding, there might be those who may not always speak uh, what God is saying, right. but at the same time, the Christian, I think the Christian can do more with them than what they are doing. Mm -hmm. But it is unfair to accuse a Christian Oftentimes, the persons who have, who have been known to be committing crimes, because they have gotten in contact with the Christian and have changed their lives, it is one less crime to be committed. Okay. So that I, I don't think it is a fair judgment on the Christian that they, they have not. They have been in the forefront all the time, will continue to be in the forefront. Mm -hmm. But I think there is a need for a bigger voice. Which I would want to pass to Sam Lund, if we have just about a minute again. What bigger voice, what greater voice do you think a Christian could make to help this crime rate, either to remain stabilized or to carry down? Well, we, we have been doing quite a lot, and of course, the law of God mandates that um, respect for one's life is, is, is there, mm -hmm. okay? And um, Christians should become very proactive and become very visible mm -hmm. in our communities okay. and promote the biblical principle okay. for respecting the dignity of the lives of our citizens in our country okay. and by extension the world. Okay. So we can do much more okay. you understand, um, in our evangelization and the sharing you know, the tenets, the basic tenets of the Christian faith okay. in our communities. So much can be done and much more can be done. Okay. In a final few moments, Sister Rosanna, somebody has listened to the deliberation and they are saying, and as much as I think that God wants the best for me, I'm finding it very difficult to forgive somebody who has done wrong to me or a member of my family. They are looking at this telecast and they want some answer. What would you offer as a maybe form of solution to help them deal with their forgiving spirit or lack thereof? Well, in the first instance, I would not pretend that it is very easy to forgive somebody who have done you wrong. For example, being a woman who was raped, I know mm -hmm. it could be very difficult. However, forgiveness is something that comes from God. Okay. And I can ask God to place forgiveness within me because if I do not, if I choose not to forgive someone who has wronged me, mm -hmm. I am wronging myself a second time. Okay. For example, it is hurting to know that somebody has raped me Mm -hmm. But if I continue to hate that person and be angry with that person and I do not forgive that person, I am harming myself again because unforgiveness, it is destructive to the human body, to the human mind. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't make sense. I'm going to be hurting myself when I do not forgive someone because for the person who doesn't forgive, right. that person is the one who is affected by the unforgiveness, right. not the person that you are not forgiving. Beautiful. Someone has said that justice is the insurance that God has given to us to take care of our lives. And it's the insurance that we pay with the premium of obedience. Simply put, if you want justice to favor you, then obey the law. That's the best way. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you to my panel for joining us and for giving your views on this whole question of capital punishment. I will look forward to having you again on JC 24-7.